fact it's a pleasure to meet you oh, here this is uh, after such a long time am i am i audible and am i am i clear to you yes yes absolutely uh, am i clear to you yeah yeah absolutely and absolutely. okay good 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 great uh, so, so we, were, we were we were actually looking forward to this for quite some time but because of this pandemic you understand all of us are busy so are you i know uh, yes so, yes eventually we could make it you know and that that's simply great that's great really really uh, uh, wonderful but uh, yes let me start with uh, our program then it's being live streamed and also uh, we put uh, put this up on youtube later i yes. a very very hearty welcome to you and all the viewers who are who are on my uh, channel right now and uh, today i'm truly truly privileged that i have with me a person who have known for years ever since i was a little baby in fact i should say i was a little baby since i know him he is uh, more than a brother for me he is my family and uh, and i'm so proud of his achievements when i went through his profile i felt you know so proud and there was all, there were almost tears in my eyes seriously uh, mr dr digonta haldar i sh- i call you tunkuda and you are you are uh, that always sounds better that sounds better <laughs> that sounds better but let's be formal because this is going to be formal. this is going to be a formal program so uh, yes it's a, it's absolutely a pleasure that you are here i am privileged uh, to actually be speaking to you after so many years and uh, i go we spoken between but then again it's a privilege because you're the principal of one of uh, the premier schools premier institutes of the of the city and uh, that is why you are here today and uh, I, i have been wanting to speak to you because you have so many feathers in your cap and then you are now holding the position of a premier institute in the in the city so i would like to know your views but before that i would like to read out your profile which is absolutely marvelous i've been i've been wanting to read this i've been very excited about today evening and wanting to read out dr digonta haldar's uh, profile so here it goes like this noted educationist and sociologist dr digonta haldar former principal assam rifles public school shillong and presently principal sarla birla gyan jyoti guwahati that is the sarla birla group of schools has worked extensively in the area of women studies at the rural segments of meghalaya his research findings earn high approval and are extensively used as valuable references for research work at the universities of india he has a teaching and administrative career of over 30 years Dr Digonta Haldar earned prominence as a writer his writings are mostly based on contemporary sociological issues that are published in different newspapers magazines scientific journals etc of repute a visionary and a philanthropist dr digonta haldar with his conscientious efforts leaves no stone unturned to carry forward the beacon of the sarla birla group of schools to even greater heights and we have seen how Besides being a CBSE practical examiner at the All India Senior School Certificate Examination, Dr. Digonta Haldar is also a head examination examiner of sociology and a member of the elite group of experts in India for finalization of sociology uh, marking schemes for the CBSE. In several occasions he has been appointed by the CBSE as the center superintendent and as a special observer. of the cbsc and the board's allied examinations he has also been appointed as observer of navodaya teachers recruitment and for kendriya vidyalaya special northeast teachers recruitment examinations dr digonta haldar holds few awards to his credit bold runners up award from air india 2008 Best Principal Award from Rashtra Bhasha Vikas Parishad 2016, Best Principal Award from Rashtra Bhasha Vikas Parishad 2017, Best Principal Northeast Zone from Science Olympiad Foundation 2018, Bharat Jyoti Puraskar from Best Citizen Publishing House 2019, and most recently Certificate of Achievement from Hummingbird Education Limited in 2020. Dr Digonta Haldar received his PhD degree on studies on the social status of the Khasi women in the rural segments of Meghalaya and a comparative analysis with the NFHS he has published several research papers and today it's my privilege to warmly warmly welcome uh, a person of such of, of of repute and a principal of repute from such a such a wonderful organization a very warm welcome to you Dr Digonta Haldar 
thank you thank you so much and thank you so much for giving me the privilege of being here with you it's always nice to be with an intellectual like you as well thank you so much thank you thank you dr digan to haldar so we will start off with our uh, with our uh, conversation we will start off with i've got a couple of questions that i want to ask you and and i'm sure you're going to answer this to perfection how is the pandemic bringing change for the indian education system we've seen that you know the education system has gone through a real turmoil during this time and how do you think the pandemic has brought about a change in the education system now uh, you see ma'am uh, coming from uh, such a vibrant school the moment to step inside sarla billa gyan jyoti you just see life and that is number one which is absolutely absolutely missing today you know it's all uh, reduced to may teaching learning and that's all about it sports extracurricular uh, all these activities and they they've just uh, vanished from nowhere we are extremely sad that uh, you know in our lifetime we had to come across a situation as this i personally feel this pandemic has really destroyed the moral of our children and it is we who are responsible our generation which is responsible which has given this to them of course our children are trying their level best we are trying our level best to keep uh, up our morals high but uh, beyond everything you know ultimately there are certain elements which children get to uh, learn in school when they are in school physically things like teamwork you know uh, it's absolutely not there now each is left to his or her own then again coming to maybe yes uh, critical thinking it has stopped you know th there have been so many effects as we progress on with our conversation i'll be Uh, opening up more things that come to my mind things uh, that we are experiencing now uh, sorry to say uh, things are not in a very good shape in fact this pandemic has caused more harm uh, than good to the children and that's a very sad thing because i have seen the vibrancy in your school i had the opportunity yes, and yes. the privilege of visiting your school it's yes, a vibrant yes. school and uh, you work as a team with your with your teachers with your students they are on their toes all the time and i am sure they must be really missing those wonderful times in your yeah, school because yeah. your school is uh, known for its vibrancy it is known yeah. for its vibrancy right so so what are the challenges faced by, faced by the educational institutions in imparting quality education during the pandemic Uh, first and foremost the most uh, important that has happened is that you know we are facing difficulties as far as connectivity is concerned now okay. we are switching between different apps uh, today on monday if it is google meet tomorrow we are trying out on zoom day after tomorrow if not anything we are try out trying out something on whatsapp uh, since we even none of us were prepared for this situation and i really don't think that our country is uh, still you know prepared enough uh, right. on, on any uh, account to face such a situation so this is uh, the major hurdle that not only our school most of the schools which are uh, devotedly into online education they are facing this this is a major hurdle so our classes although try as we might but then there are problems that are coming in while taking classes the consistency of classes are uh, you know uh, 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 suffering setbacks but yes uh, of course we are trying our best to make up whatever uh, losses we are incurring in the process of taking our classes then again you know as far as uh, controlling the children i mean uh, inculcating discipline in them as as long as you don't have uh, one to one interaction inside a classroom uh, ma'am it's it's extremely difficult you know uh, there could be a lot of things which could be told to them online but as, as uh, uh, if you don't get the child near you ultimately mm -hmm. it's uh, not really done you know i'll i'll be very open and frank here you know whatever right. uh, uh, other hurdles we are facing i'm telling you very frankly someone uh, maybe some other person in my in my uh, place would uh, rather say that no no everything's going on fine things are going on fine because of fire force because of the efforts of the children but then these are the uh, you know hurdles that we are certainly facing there's no no doubt about that you know and and you are one principal who is very close to the students i have i have seen that even during when when i visited your program i've seen children I running am. to you and you're very close So, I am so missing them. Is, they are, they are missing the me. You know, you will be missing your students. That is absolutely, one reason. Absolutely, absolutely. And and, and 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 something which is already to your knowledge, I stay on campus. And and what a campus I am living in now, sans the children. I just cannot explain this. That is sad. And, and Very. And then this brings another thing in my mind. You know, uh, uh, since you have told me that uh, uh, the the question that you asked me, 
uh, we uh, when we talk about uh, children with special abilities you know these right, are right. children uh, probably they are also suffering uh, a bit you know uh, this is another mm -hmm. uh, another problem that we are facing we are not really being able to reach up to them to the extent to which we should have or rather we do when the school is on so so dr halder how are you uh, i mean addressing these challenges you are saying that you're facing a lot of these challenges you're not ha you don't have these children you're not having a one to one interaction with them and then you know there are so many problems in fact the pandemic has brought a whole lot of problems with it so how are you as the head of a as the head of institute how are you you know addressing these challenges uh, first and foremost you know the, the the best thing that we could do is we could uh, get near them with uh, more and more uh, innovations that's the only way uh, that you know you can you can uh, exercise your entire uh, gray matter inside and and take out the best in you which our teachers are doing and try to make things uh, almost like life learning you know? it's it's almost like that so uh, we keep interacting with the children uh, children who have special needs we are regularly in touch with them most importantly you know our school i'll tell you something when we began with this online approach we decided to uh, not to experiment too much we decided to give, decided to give them an easy flow what we thought is that let's not uh, start begin with something called zoom which was uh, three months back which was uh, almost like you know uh, rocket science today right. it's very common but then mm -hmm. that's why we thought let us give the children a platform which would which would make things easy for them and therefore probably we were the only school we began across the board we began using uh, and taking classes uh, using whatsapp whatsapp was a tremendous success and then finally we realized that now it's time that we explored more once the children had the hang on things and we found that the children are almost you know kind of a a a, a real life situation had already been built between the teachers although things were being done online but then then we started exploring and now of course we are working on several apps and we are finding and on top of everything i have told my teachers you know they are an excellent lot of teachers you know they are they are uh, taking out their time to uh, innovate things you know uh, create uh, different kinds of movies they create, create different uh, ppts create you no know, everything you know uh, well you know ultimately the more you give the children the more interest they build in fact online platform is an excellent platform something which we had been missing also we have to look at it from the uh, other point of view we've learned a lot uh, uh, through, uh, through this pandemic and uh, that is what basically we are exploring our best as much as we can giving our best and and we are keeping our children preoccupied and happy today if you ask any of my children uh, anywhere none mm -hmm. of my children will say that uh, we are missing uh, our teachers or our principal uh, because we they all, all, always get us we are always there with them it's only that you know that, that invisible wall is there in between us that's all you know otherwise sarla bila has become a very successful story as far as online classes are concerned yes indeed i must repeat that it is actually a success story i have heard from many parents that you started off classes even when the pandemic started the lockdown started yes. you started yes. off classes very early even before anybody yes. else thinking Absolutely. about it i Absolutely. i know of some students and some parents who said that sarla bilog has started classes already i said wow that's great because many schools has still not as they have still not done classes they have still not gone on to online classes and they are still not done any whatsapp classes nothing there's there's absolutely no but then i have noticed that sarla bilog and some other schools as well they have gone into classes straight away they've not made the students feel uh, right. alone aloof or right. anything right. made them feel very right. bonded so i think right. i think teachers are very equipped you know so uh, i feel that uh, this is my comment to you that i feel that your teachers are very equipped in guiding your students to you know uh, to choose the correct form of platform to do these uh, kind of online classes is it it's, is it like that this is uh, the best when i joined the school i found that uh, our teachers here are, are already tech savvy you know uh, i i hardly had to explain anything to them they already okay. knew what to do in fact even before i could guide them they they came uh, back to me with uh, so many solutions and that is why we ultimately took a common consensus and we thought that first let us go a little slow number one give adequate time and you know uh, hands on experience to the children uh, so that they are uh, in tune with us you know let's not yeah. do something very artificial that you know scare of the child with something online that he cannot uh, manage himself ha huh? now our children they know absolutely how to handle whatsapp how to handle zoom how to handle google Meet. they are they are absolutely pally with that that's why things are going very normal at our end you know in our school 
to be very honest everything's going wonderful i must say fingers crossed and thumbs up to your teachers because you've got a great team because see when the leader is good when you have a good leader and when the when the captain of the ship is good then all the others follow in a in a in a like in a likewise manner you know so i think you're very lucky and i i i have got my fingers crossed for you so uh, the other thing you a little while ago you talked about how important that it is that uh, virtual classroom it's it's something that we had been missing you know it's something you want to see the advantage of doing virtual classroom uh, classrooms uh, education but how do you gauge it vis-a-vis uh, -vis the normal classes the virtual classes and the normal class how would you gauge it vis-a-vis -vis the other classes Uh, uh first of all let me tell you uh, on a negative uh, note now first of all uh, these virtual classrooms they they do not help you to develop uh, classroom conduct in the children neither uh, friendliness nor group behavior cooperative behavior critical thinking all these things are missed out to be honest okay. you know uh, because you know uh, 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 if you remember man i know you are from one of the uh, best institutions in india you are a, a loreto product and you know what uh, natural schooling means there yes. there there, there have been so many other things besides our textbooks that we learn from our irish missionaries which yes. which, which we here in sarabila we also try to inculcate but now without the children we are really missing out on this you know this, this is one uh, big setback for most of the schools uh, as so, far as so, the classrooms are concerned so do you think this is uh, uh, can we again you know these children that you're talking about and they missed out on the classroom teaching and the you know the we are talking about manners and you're talking about a lot of things which are which are involved with the with the with the, the with the child growing up so are they going to be able to cope up with this i mean they've missed out on a lot and it's not it's going to be till august or september that schools are going to reopen and uh, do you think that they are going to behave normally do you, do you think they are going to behave like normal children or are they going to be slightly off the track This is just uh, an off-the-track question I'm asking you. Yeah, I know. This is, uh, uh, in fact, a little debatable also, because uh, okay. when it comes to uh, a child growing sensibly, it's very, very important that all the stakeholders they uh, play their parts equally. Now no. is the time, since the children are at home, it's extremely, extremely important that these values, you know, are inculcated by the parents. We have been talking to our parents. We have been having meetings with our parents. You know. this part has to be played by the parents and that's all because since we are not uh, of course our counselor is doing a great job uh, very soon we are going to uh, launch a, a weekly webinar in which uh, we, uh, we i don't want to keep this off records i want to keep it on records in this counseling session i'm going to invite you you have to help us out oh we'll, wonderful we'll, we'll request, this is will it was ha huh, will will be organizing webinars in uh, google meet so that you, you can address at least 4 to 500 children together so from our side this is the way we are you know we are doing but parents uh, certainly they do have to pitch in now uh, to uh, teach values and you know these things to the children it's very very important and and look let's look at it from another point of the parents have got a scope now in fact the parents okay. are getting their children 24/7 which our parents never got us like that in fact till yes, uh, the parents would never get the children and if somebody would come and uh, tell me sir my child is not studying things in school Now, probably it's my turn to ask the parent why isn't the child learning now? So, so let, okay. let's take it on that account. You know, it's important now the parents pitch in and they uh, try out their best on this now. Right. So, are you also having special webinars for counselling parents? Because uh, I have seen yeah, many are, schools going, yeah, yeah, doing are, that. We are going to organise this. In fact, from the coming week all, uh, only, we are already we are preparing the schedules now. So, we'll be having okay. special webinars for the parents where. we will or uh, it, it's not to not only our counselor but we will be inviting experts from outside also who will oh, talk to our parents huh? so uh, for that uh, you know I, i'll need a lot of brainstorming which is already in the process we are doing we are on uh, with the job uh, hopefully from the, the coming week itself we'll get started on that also all right all right so uh, another thing dr diganta hadra i'm very worried about is that you know slow learner i had been a slow learner myself and then i i found that this is actually an advantage for me because when i learn slow i uh, kind of have everything inside my head inside my hard disk but then there are many children many students in your institute who might be slow learners so how are the are your teachers coping are do they take special classes for them after the, the, the webinars or the uh, the study sessions that they have online or how do they do it yeah uh, 
A very good question. In fact, uh, we do have some uh, children like that. Uh, slow learners are there. Uh, children who miss out classes are there because of some uh, reason or the other. So we okay. take special care that uh, an extra class is conducted. And the best part about our Sarla Bila teachers is that they put in 100%, rather 200% efforts, even after the sessions are over. They are okay. available for the children any point of time. Till a normal decent time, they are, our children have been given this uh, you know, freedom to call up any teacher, make a video call or call up over telephone or whatever it is. Any doubts, anything. My teachers are available around the clock. You know? So uh, we, we have not thought about any, uh, you know, uh, any routine extra classes because our teachers are already available. No, no one will say no in case our children approach our teachers. And, and uh, that applies to me as well. Because there have been hundreds of parents, uh, more than uh, students, you know, parents who have been calling me up. Uh, every half an hour, uh, you know, you will find some parent or the other is calling. Uh, sometimes it's 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 little taxing, but you know, I understand. It's so very important during these pandemic days that you know I, I give them this support because they, they are looking up at me, looking for their solutions. You know, so we as a team, we are always always available for them. Around the clock. Wonderful, wonderful. I can see Sarla Billa glowing like a north star in the sky, and I can see that it's going. Very well because of a wonderful leader like Dr. Digata Haldar. Um, so it's a, team, it's a team. It's a team. It's a beautiful team. It's a teamwork. It's a teamwork. Yeah. Even then, the leader is the leader matters. You know, the leader matters a lot. Yeah, I mean, I see. See, we were talking about parents. So I really want to know what is the response of the parents to this new education system? Are they being cooperative to their wards, to their students, to their children, or how are they coping with this new system? Uh, it, it's a it's a uh, it's a mixed attitude I should say. First of okay. all, uh, as far as I wouldn't be knowing about other schools, but as far as Sarlabila is concerned, our parents are extremely happy, ma'am. Let me tell you, and you can put me in records in quotes wherever you feel like. When you interact with any one of our parents, you'll get to know this better. They're very happy with the way we are conducting classes, and okay. we are clearing the doubts and all. But then yes, uh, just as we are having, they are also having uh, one thing in their mind that this is probably taking a little toll on the health of the children. So oh. this is one thing where you know we we are uh, having a series of uh, online meetings and discussions amongst us. I have been taking inputs from my seniors up there in in Kolkata. Uh, in fact, you know we are a chain of schools uh, under uh, Mrs. Uh, our honourable chairperson, Mrs. Jashi Mohta. We are eleven schools. We have a school in Doha as well. The best part is that you no, know, it's a beautiful thing which I want to tell you now. You know, I am not alone. Rather, Sarla Bila Gyanjyoti Guwahati is not alone. We 11 schools are together. For any and every reason, we are together. So any kind of inputs needed, expert advices needed, whatever needed. You no, know, we are always together. We are getting it from those schools. Vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, you know, we are also given when, when it comes to them asking uh, for inputs from us. So it's a huge family. So uh, off late, we have been discussing this uh, very intently that probably we'll have to slightly reduce the number of classes and... Uh, lessen their screen exposure, you know, because uh, in the long run, it may really cause uh, a lot of damage to the children. So this is one concern area which I can, uh, I have noticed, which is there in the, in the parents. At, at the okay. Uh, so yes, again, coming back to children. Uh, since uh, they've been indoors, I, I know a lot of my neighbors who are like, you know, they are studying in Salabila and I can see that they do not have any outdoor activity at all. And you have a huge playground. I've seen the playground that you have and the kind of activities you have for children. You promote music, you promote sports, you promote uh, acting and you promote, you promote the whole world of activities of creativity to them. Right. Now, these children are inside and they have not been able to do a lot of things and it must be taking a toll on them. So... Do you have counseling sessions for them once in a while that, you know, it's okay, we are fine, we're going to get over this. And do you have these sessions? Yes, absolutely. We do uh, have calls coming in uh, very often from parents uh, who find their children a little dis disturbed at times, a little depressed at times. Because you understand, I very well understand a child of just about 13, 14, 15 years of age. For right. how long, ma'am, you, you just imagine we have almost imprisoned them. In right. a way, that's that's, that's how, how things are going on. They have been caged. So it, it is bound to happen and our counsellor's role is very important. I think she's more important now than our teachers. And uh, Mrs. Gitashri Bortamuli, she also <laughs> happens to be, I'll just put this in, in records, uh, of late the government has uh, incorporated a system in which I think they have included uh, about uh, 220 or 10 health officials 
including doctors, psychiatrists, counselors, and all that. Our uh, counselor, ma'am, has also been selected to be a part of that. So she's a great counselor, and uh, she really, really addresses uh, to the requirements of the children whenever required. Even at the middle of the night, there are records where you know children called her up, you know, and they they find her extremely close. They have been always finding her a very approachable person. That's why they don't, uh, you know, they, at the, uh, the anything comes to them, and first thing they think that best thing is to talk to my man. You know, but then what I was just telling you, what we thought of now, we will also be going ahead with. Uh, we'll be expanding our horizon of counseling now, uh, even beyond uh, one-to-one -one counseling. Uh, I think uh, it's high time that from next week, as I told you, we'll be opening these webinars where we will yep. bring in experts from outside also. So mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, apart from the normal, usual problems uh, connected to pandemic now, you know, there would be other issues which could also be addressed, you know, and children, they, they have so many questions in their minds now, even, even things related to their career, related to what happens after this. See, uh, as on day today, CBSE has declared, uh, you know, what has happened. They said that we, we will not conduct exams any further. So uh, the children, uh, you know, I have a couple of parents who called me up and uh, they, they uh, just don't know what to do now, whether or not to accept this, that uh, their children, uh, you know, those, those uh, marks according to the parameters that uh, CBSE sets. Uh, which will be given away from the schools, whether that would be better or, or rather to uh, sit for the exams again when they will be conducted. So these queries are also there in the minds of children. There are hundreds of queries, which is why we need experts and which we are going to do very soon. From the coming week, we're going to address this. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. That's a wonderful thing. In fact, I must say if uh, Dr. Gitashri is Dr. Gitashri, right? If she's watching this program, I must uh, applaud you for doing such a wonderful work. Your principal has said such highly about you. And we must have this uh, opportunity to meet you sometimes, actually. Ma'am, please. Uh, so, um, uh, Dr. Hagar, the other thing I wanted to speak is that there's, you know, recently I've been reading a lot of news about where these rural uh, areas, you know, this is, this is not from your school. I'm just talking about uh, situations where young people have committed suicide because they have not been able to live up to, uh, you know, the virtual, uh, the reality that is happening. They, are, they have been wanting to do their studies through virtual medium, but because of the digital divide, the kind of connections that they have, it's very poor. And that, that is one reason, as recently there's been a child who has, you know, committed suicide because he could not attend his study. So how do you think, you know, what is your opinion about this? What is your uh, take on this? I uh, personally feel, see, I have uh, nothing more to add uh, since you've already told what is happening and people are aware of this. Uh, I can just about give you one uh, effective solution in this in which the government certainly has to pitch in, the Department of Education has to pitch in, or for that matter, if other departments also have to, like Department of uh, Telecommunication and all that. It is very important that we create some dedicated uh, channels in television where, right. you know, uh, experts uh, can be roped in, where they can give their lectures and these lectures can be shown to the children. Okay, mm -hmm. this, this is one area where, which I feel it's almost been more than three, four months now and I, if you talk about India, it's almost uh, close to a year now that we are suffering this pandemic. And till date, I have not seen many of these dedicated channels uh, meant for the children. Mm -hmm. So I think even in the remotest of areas, uh, ma'am, you get to see television. Yeah. That's, that's commonplace now. So we are, uh, I think it's underexploited. It's very important that we use this gadget now, television now, and, and uh, explode it. It is very important that we explode this area now. And, and a lot of problems can be reduced you know, if we uh, begin exploring television now. True, true. I think that's a wonderful thing you've said. I think these dedicated channels, I, I've seen in the past also, Rudarshan used to carry a lot of these yes. things and we used to sit in front of the television, we used to watch right. those science programs, yes. to watch yes. those different programs on television and which used to be yes. given yes. by different professors, yes. teachers, yes. and we used to love those. We used to yes. garner a lot of knowledge. I think it's very important. That's a very, very important thing you've said. So as we move towards our at the end of our program, I would like to ask you, uh, what is it going to be like post pandemic? This is a question I I am very I'm very keen on asking uh, educationists to, to to leaders of education. What is it going to be? What is the education scene going to be like after the pandemic? It is it is going to be very positive, okay. extremely positive. Because now, as I had already mentioned, ma'am, uh, we have learned something new apart from something which we already knew. So now it's going to be a blend of both. Once the schools open. Sky is the limit now. 
and i i can well imagine to which extent our teachers will go once they get the children for themselves also and at the same time they get the children after they go back home also so it's going to be a paradise and we are really really looking forward to this wonderful wonderful it's a blend and, it's a blend between both yes such a positive way of uh, seeing this whole thing i mean this is wonderful dr haldar it has been a pleasure talking to you i'd like to say you to your institute first i'd like to salute you for taking on this pandemic so positively for for working with your team consistently and working on your children consistently giving them the kind of counseling and the kind of uh, support that they need the parents as well and uh, it has been a pleasure because meeting a leader like this meeting a leader of education like this is in fact a privilege for us because you know there are very few uh, dreamers and visionaries in education that we get to meet every day and you are one of them and thank you so much for taking for accepting my invitation to come on to my channel and speak to me and uh, i'm sure there will be a lot of people watching in they are right now watching your program they are watching you speaking and they're going to be really really, really so happy about uh, the kind of things that you have said the kind of positive things you have said i would like to salute your institute your group of institutes they are all, all working as a team and teamwork is what is going to get us ahead and that is what you have shown thank you so much it's been a real real pleasure thank yes. you dr digonta haldar yes, thank you but, but with folded hands let me thank you also because you know we are also human beings and at the end of the day we need such people like you to come and motivate us because you know uh, unless people like you hold our hands it's a very difficult journey and i'm so thankful that you have asked me to talk to you uh, and you know please be with us all the time and as i told you my request i'm putting this on records i'm sending across an invitation very soon as soon as we begin our webinar because our teachers and our children will love to talk to you and gain from you immensely it will be my pleasure it will be my pleasure absolute thank pleasure thank you very thank much you. thank you thank you